So today uh, we are entering, uh, uh, the, the, this is the second class in our series of how to get started uh, sessions. So today we are almost getting to half, halfway through the course and the topic for today is uh, intervention mapping and we're going to touch a little bit about evaluation. We have three objectives. Uh, so by the end of the, the class, you should be able to be, to, to be able to, to address these issues. First, we're going to describe uh, intervention mapping. Then second, we're going to look at the six steps that are involved in intervention mapping. And then the third objective is to try to look at how we implemented these three, six steps in our own serious games that we, we developed in the lab, in our own serious game. So maybe you, you, you ask yourself, why should we be focusing on uh, intervention mapping? Because maybe you, you are already, you are public health students, and so you are, maybe you are learning this, these things already in other courses. Well, uh, on the first lecture, I mentioned that uh, serious games are actually 25% technology. The rest, the 75%, is where behavioral science come in, where epidemiology come in, uh, where other technical expertise um, actually come in. And as you can imagine, you need to actually work or collaborate with many other different uh, experts. So this class will really help you to try to find a way to bring all the other aspects together in, in collaborating, in designing and developing a, a serious game. So first I'd like to begin with this uh, slide. Uh, it's one of the slides I learned when I was a, a master student through Masako Sensei class uh, in socio-epidemiology. Uh, it's, it's the value chain in behavioral change. Did any one of you uh, take this class or learn about this uh, slide or remember this slide? Anyone? Maybe not. Or oh, maybe you will once I start showing how it is. So uh, usually in public health you have an organization or a research group, or someone interested in behavior change, or even government at times. And they do what they need to do to develop an intervention. They identify a problem, a health problem, and they want to uh, change the situation. So they design the intervention. And at the other side of the spectrum, you have the user, you have the audience, the target audience that is set to receive this intervention. And oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, you find that uh, we receive, as public health uh, officials or epidemiologists, we receive uh, unfavorable feedback from our uh, target audience. Maybe because they didn't like the intervention, or maybe because they didn't thought uh, 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 it was suited for them, or something like that. So there's only one winner in this scenario. It's the organization because the life of, of the organization goes on. It never stops. Even if the intervention is unsuccessful or successful, it never stops. So the organization wins, but uh, uh, the audience uh, loses out because they didn't like the intervention. So there's uh, no value exchange. But in, 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 in another scenario, you have the situation a little bit different. Uh, you have a situation where both the organization or, or the, the, the social marketer and the audience both win. The intervention is developed based on the preferences of the audience and as a result the audience uh, uh, like the intervention and give positive feedback. So partly the reason we are having this this particular session today is to try and help you think about ways to uh, make sure that your intervention uh, that you're thinking about is built on uh, the preferences of the audiences okay so actually intervention mapping was designed by a certain professor who felt that there was no particular theory or model or framework that really addressed 
uh, how to bring uh, literature, how to bring uh, stakeholders, how to bring the audience together to design an intervention. Uh, he says in one of his papers that he received questions like this in, from his students, like, uh, how do I decide what intervention uh, method to use? I'm doing research, I want to improve condom use, but how do I decide which method to use? There are so many methods, there are so many examples, but how do you decide on one particular one? But there was no guidance uh, prior to this model, the author says. Another question is, how can I uh, get from program goals and objectives to specific intervention strategies for program uh, participants? Another question was, uh, how do I link program design with planning for the program and implementation? How do I link from design stage down to implementation? So I think this is one of the frameworks that really help us try to link uh, those two ends together. So the authors write that uh, intervention mapping is intended to make steps in planning interventions uh, explicit enough to demystify the process to facilitate collaborative planning by individuals of varying background, so the interdisciplinary part of it. And then they say that unlike a road map or a guideline, um, the framework is interactive. Uh, the planner is expected to return to earlier steps in the planning stage, even if they're in the last stage, to refine what they already do, they, they, they already done in, in previous steps, such that they improve as they go in. So it's not just a roadmap or just a guideline, you cannot return back. So it's built for people to move from step one to two, go back to one, three, four, five, go back to three, that kind of uh, arrangement. So. Intervention mapping uh, aims to ensure maximum efficiency of health promotion programs by ensuring that uh, the needs and perspectives of one, stakeholders, two, the end users of the programs, and then three, uh, evidence in the field. So linking all these things together in designing or developing uh, there is certain intervention that you are looking at. And in our case, it's probably serious games, right? So here are the six steps that are involved in uh, intervention mapping. Uh, the first one is needs assessment. The second one is uh, program objectives. The third one is theory-based methods and practical strategies. The fourth one is program design program implementation, and the evaluation plan. It sounds straightforward, right? Pretty much straightforward. We can almost figure out what activities go in these different stages, right? Okay, in the next few slides, I'm going to give you uh, some detailed tasks that are involved in each of the, in each of the steps, the six steps. And in these slides, I would like you to reflect back on what you, you as a group, were able to write. Where you, wh what you missed, uh, where you, you, you got it right, and just reflect uh, on that as we continue. So let's first look at uh, the needs assessment. So before the intervention, uh, the, need, the, the intervention of behavioral change, um, we need to do the needs assessment. In doing the needs assessment, uh, so first we need to establish a working group. We need to establish a working group of uh, technical experts, stakeholders, stakeholders. Stakeholders means people of other organizations. Mm, if, you, if, you, if your intervention is in Kyoto University, you need to probably work with people from the hospital from this department and from another department or from administration. So stakeholders, <clears throat> you need to involve stakeholders. And then you also need to consult with the users of the program you are designing. 
they should be part of your, ideally, of your group. So establishing uh, this planning group, uh, aim for breadth and depth of, of, of the knowledge that you will get. <coughs> and then uh, start on to conduct the needs assessment. Uh, describe the population and the health program very clearly in a way that is able to measure. You have to define what is the program, who is affected, and uh, uh, how you can be able to <coughs> input uh, any intervention and then also there's environmental aspect you, you need to uh, survey the environment in terms of policies in terms of uh, group norms uh, you need to understand uh, the environment very carefully and there is a model or a framework that is kind of, is, is is popular in this uh, uh, intervention mapping it's called the precede precede proceed actually <coughs> This, this model diagnoses the population you're working with. Uh, it diagnoses uh, many, many factors that contribute to, 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 the, to the program you're working with. And then it also guides a uh, team to assess uh, causes of health problems at multiple levels, at individual level, interpersonal level, um, organizational level. This model helps you to diagnose uh, different problems at that stage. And then also at this stage, it's when you first initially write down uh, the problem. The program goals, the problem, you specifically state it down at this stage. And I want you to notice that uh, this is not the final time you'll write the goals of the project. The goals of the project might change as you gain more information as you do your, your reviews. And uh, in literature review, it can be, uh, you know, it can be primary data, it can also be secondary data. You can review other people's work or uh, you can uh, use data from different sources or you can go out and conduct the research yourself. So it can be different. So next I want to share some of the steps that we actually did in Swaziolo study. First, we established uh, a working team of collaborators here uh, in this department. Uh, and then we also established collaborators in Ministry of Health in Swaziland <coughs> and uh, some non-governmental organizations and game development company, it was in Cape Town, as well as a, a game publisher in Japan. You can see that already this team is multidisciplinary uh, you have people from the game uh, aspect, you have people from Minister of Health, you have people from NGO. These people are going to help uh, help us actually know what is acceptable, uh, what the situation is in terms of uh, policies to change behavior in Swaziland. We, we didn't want to just go off on a tangent. We wanted to, wanted to already, uh, the intervention was going to be built in, in the strategies and priorities of the country. And the only way you can know this, apart from reading uh, uh, policies, is to involve the policymakers within your team. So we, we did a lot of consultation between Japan, South Africa, and Swaziland. And as you can imagine, it's, it's very, it might be very difficult to get everyone to sit down in a meeting like this. So it was a lot of uh, moving up and down to collaborate on this. <coughs> And then also we specified the overall uh, goals of the intervention. And I, I want to mention to you that at this stage, we didn't have funding. So you want to design an intervention, uh, but you haven't set out the goals yet. So there's no funding. But you need to collaborate with past, part, partners to, 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 to understand what's going on in the situation. But you need money for that. But there's no funding at this point. And you don't even know if you will get funding or not, usually at this stage. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, now I can talk back and list very nicely the steps that we did, but actually there was a lot of uncertainty in each of the steps, right? So if you, if you, you can imagine speaking to someone, Minister of Health in your country, telling them that you wanted to, you're thinking about uh, uh, designing a game for HIV prevention. Imagine how they look at you, is this guy crazy? <laughs> at that time, when we started in 2011, 12, 13, you had to explicitly, de explicitly define what a game for health is, what a serious game is. No one really understood what you meant. Is this guy joking? We are talking about adults here, 
25 years or more older, they don't play games. You know, for them a game is just for five year or two year old. So at that time there's a lot of uncertainty. But you need to find people who will agree on, on a vision. It's, it's not anywhere, it's just your vision. And often, if you're lucky, maybe you already have some funding, but sometimes you don't have any funding. You just say, you know, we want to do this, but you know, we want to find money. We don't yet have money funding for the project, but you need to establish it. <coughs> and then also we consulted with the internet service provider in Swaziland to actually know the internet speed, the download speeds, and who were using which phone. So we needed to, to know the distribution of phones in the, in, in the country because we wanted to see if people would actually use the game. So we consulted with them as well. And we, of course, searched literature. We, we reviewed um, Cochrane Library for interventions for sexual behavior change. Uh, we, re did, we read a lot of systematic reviews, uh, cross-section studies, both in Swaziland and in the region. And also we reviewed uh, serious games already that were, were already in, in the space. Uh, actually, 99% of the games we reviewed were, were, were outside of Swaziland or Africa, for that matter. And then also um, we attended a serious games conference where we actually really got to understand the trends of what was happening in the field because you had many experts from all over the world sitting down for about three or four days in one conference. So you could meet from morning to sunset, you could meet uh, people who were designing games and talk to them, hear their stories. So it was fascinating. For us, it was part of the needs assessment uh, stage of uh, the game. We also conducted one-to-one uh, -one interviews. We sat with people we considered our target audience, people we thought that they would use this game. We sat with them and asked what they want, what they wanted, um, if, if whether or not they would use such a game. And actually, <coughs> in conducting uh, 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 the needs assessment, we, we did our own study, the, the Facebook study. So, uh, we realized that people were saying they would actually use information on an interactive platform. In fact, that is why we decided to take this route of developing a game. So those were the steps we took in the needs assessment for Swazi Yolo game. And the next step is uh, program objectives. So the most important things to underline in needs assessment is involving stakeholders and involving their consumer, the, piece, the people who will use uh, the intervention. So next is uh, uh, program objectives. So <coughs> we need to set program objectives. And in program objectives, actually, uh, the end uh, uh, goal uh, the end product of this step is a matrix of change. It's a matrix of change uh, made of uh, change objectives. Change objectives are compiled using performance objectives and changeable uh, 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 determinants. In this way, uh, let me show you. For, first, for performance objectives, uh, these are defined what, this define what the recipients of the intervention need to do in order to achieve the project or program outcomes. So performance objectives um, define what the recipient of the intervention needs to do. What is it that they need to do to achieve the goals of the project or the program, right? Specific uh, things. So for example, uh, if, if you have someone as your target who has this kind of habit to sit and just watch TV all day. Um, you need to really think very hard in your performance objectives on what they need to do in order to move from here to being active. Right. These are some. These are very specific things that you you need to compile. And then next in the changeable uh, 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 determinants. Uh, the next task is to select important and changeable determinants of described behaviors rooted in the findings uh, from the needs assessment. So, for example, you have the performance objectives and you have the changeable determinants. These both come together to make up uh, the change objectives. 
of the intervention. So you use a matrix to do this and this is called the change matrix. So you have the determinant up here. What will determine whether or not this person will change the behavior? For example, uh, knowledge. For simplicity, let's just assume it's knowledge. So they need knowledge. Okay, and what is the performance outcome for this objective? They have knowledge, but what is the performance outcome for this objective? And then from there you design uh, the change objective. You do this, you do this for all uh, the performance objectives that you desire to have. So most important part here is to ask uh, what needs to change related to the determinant of the program to, for the participants to achieve the program objective. Okay. So in our Swazi YOLO experience, uh, we stated the performance objectives and we stated together with timelines. So we wanted to know when they will do this, at what time. And then we used uh, qualitative and quantitative studies, interviews to segment our population, uh, our target population, to gain insights into what we consider to be the determinants of what we wanted to change. In our study, it became very obvious that we needed to focus on perception of risk because uh, we learned from interviews, from literature, that people were already well aware of the basic facts in Swaziland. They know what HIV is, they know how to get tested, they know how to prevent HIV, for example, using a condom. So people relatively knew uh, these basic facts. So we quickly decided that the problem, the big problem, it's one of the problems, but not the only problem. The big problem is uh, perception of risk. We asked in our qualitative study, we asked people what they thought HIV, uh, prevention, HIV prevalence was in the country. They told us. Every single one of them in our one-to-one -one interviews told us that it was very high. How high? They thought even the, 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 the national prevalence statistics was not accurate. In fact, they thought it was even higher. Because at that time, everyone knew someone who had ex at least died of HIV, either a friend or a colleague or something. So they thought it was very high. But then when you ask them, what about your individual risk? What, is, what do you think about your risk? And they told, no, uh, me, for me it's okay. I don't think I can get HIV. So we realized that there's this low risk perception which we wanted to work towards. And then we identified important, important change objectives such as, I um, already said, risk perception and intention to change behavior. The next uh, stage is theory-based uh, methods and practical strategies. I hope you are looking back at your uh, state steps or tasks that you took and see where you can uh, improve uh, an input. The next is, of course, theory, methods, and practical strategy. You need to decide on which theory and how you're going to deliver that theory and what are the practical strategies you're going to use for that theory. Um, of course, I will not spend much time here because you're already well versed in many different theories, um, but <coughs> um, planners seek theory-based methods and practical strategies corresponding to the change objectives. So this is the most important part. The theory should directly relate to the change objective. Because you have a determinant of the change, you have the performance of the objective, then you have the change objective. So you want a theory that will address directly the change objective. This is what helps you to actually narrow down the theories and get to one theory that best suits what you want to do. And at this point, I want to say that actually, uh, okay, let's continue. <laughs> So next is uh, planning group. Uh, uh, the planning group helps in deciding uh, or selecting the behavioral theories as well as the practical strategies. So you get these people to sit in, in, in a place and you discuss the change objectives that you've identified and then you discuss the theories that are related to that and then you go to a very systematic way to, 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 to deciding which theory is, is going to be used. 
And then the bottom line is to ensure that selected methods address the change objectives and selected methods should be acceptable acceptable to the target audience remember you are wanting you want you are targeting uh, a win-win situation a win for you as an organization or as a designer of the intervention and also a win for the the, the person who's going to receive the intervention it's not enough to just design the intervention it it's it gets completed when you have acceptance and usage of the intervention by the audience and positive feedback so this is what guides you on what will be your methods and what will be your strategies and what will be theory you would use. <clears throat> so in, in Swazi Yolo, we, we used uh, the theory of uh, planned behavior, specifically the intention, uh, the intent component of that theory and the health belief model focusing on the perceived susceptibility in that uh, model. We identified uh, intervention platforms as uh, Android operating systems. So remember, you need to figure out the strategy that you're going to use to reach your audience. So uh, in our needs assessment, we realized that many people are using an Android phone versus other, all other phones. So we decided on uh, Android operating system. And then we determined that uh, uh, our intervention would be a role-playing story-based game. Remember, at the start, we just knew that, look, we wanted to create a game to involve them. But we had no idea what kind of a game would be effective. Do we run a simulation? Do we run a shooting game? What type of game? We didn't know. So we only had ideas about this after consulting with the stakeholders and consulting with uh, the game developing company as well as the target audience. And uh, we decided on strategies, the point system, the reward system in the game, and also uh, ensure that the game addresses the change objective is very important. So we linked uh, key decision points in the game uh, to our evaluation plan. So this is also a very important component because uh, evaluation step is at the end, right? But the beauty of this model is that you don't start evaluation here. You don't start thinking about evaluation here. You finalize evaluation at this, time, at this stage. But all throughout the process, um, you, you think about evaluation. Actually, uh, the, the model is something like this. Mm, or or the, the opposite way, like this. So you think about evaluation throughout, uh, you end up having a process that is not just one way, you move through, through steps uh, like that. Okay. So program design is, is our next step, step number four. <clears throat> and in this step, uh, also you conduct it in consultation. Uh, the interesting part in the program design is that uh, your preconceived ideas might be changed. So you, you might decide very well that, look, I want to change adherence. And the reason for people that are, are not adherent is that they forget. But after this deliberate process, you, you may discover that, look, people are not taking drugs because they don't have food to eat. For example, one of our researchers in the lab found out that there was uh, people who were not adherent to antiretroviral therapy related to uh, food insecurity. So it might change the way you think. You just previously you just thought, if we just told, tell them that it's important to take drugs, it's important to take drugs, people will automatically take drugs. So the problem is not knowledge or it's not forgetting. It might be other program. So at this stage in the design, you actually realize that you know, your, your preconceptions about the program problem is a little bit different about what the actual situation is and what the audience prefers. The mode of delivery might be very different from what you previously thought and what the people actually prefer to have. Okay. So you involve stakeholders 
uh, this, at this point in the program design, it is when you design uh, the themes, the, the kind of broad topics that you want the game to achieve, the intervention to achieve, and the content. If it's a story, what would be the story? What would be the story about? What will it be about? And the scope, what do you want to address? And by this time, you would have identified many issues, many determinants of the issues, but you want to scope it down. You want to directly focus on what you will uh, try to focus on. And also the sequences of events, right? So um, do you want to start with knowledge, perception, or you can just start with perception? You decide uh, during this stage. So at this stage, expect the design plans to evolve. It's a living document. They will change throughout the intervention. <clears throat> so uh, by nature, this, this step is really interdisciplinary. Uh, you, as, as, as an epidemiologist or public health official, is not enough. You need expertise from game developers. You need expertise from uh, uh, pro computer uh, programmers or graphic designers, uh, people who know about project management. So you need to be able to consult and work across teams in a way that you both agree on timelines, on what the costs will be, the expenditure will be, when the deadline, when the, when the deadline of the project will be. Um, everything you need to decide uh, uh, at this stage. But of course, it can change later on. So in Swazi Yolo, we prepared uh, the documentations when we were in this stage. There are many documents that you need. As you can imagine, there's something called a game design concept note or the design document. And there's the study protocol, you know very well. The, 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 the design, the concept uh, note, the design document, is almost the same as a study protocol, but they're, they're di different. So this one is, is largely done by the programmers. They, they explicitly state in this document how the game will be, even before they start creating it. So you can see it on paper. I have uh, close to 150 pages of this document. And then uh, the study protocol uh, and uh, the conditions of terms and conditions of the game use. I was very surprised that I didn't know about this until uh, I was actually at this stage that I needed to have the terms and conditions for playing the game. I needed to consult with a lawyer. I didn't know any lawyer. Uh, going through university process might take a little bit longer than the time I had. So it was very difficult. But I needed to, you know, design legally sound uh, terms and conditions for playing the game. So at this point is where you, 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 you come up with this. And then also you start you know, thinking about the, the promotional brief, the, the document that you give marketers or people in the marketing company to design for you. So you need to think about this. You need, you need to write it yourself. You need to be able to, to write it yourself. I'll, I will show you how you, you come up with that. So the characters uh, in the game were based on the target audience. So we segmented the, the audience uh, because I mentioned before that the story is not just one story in Swazi Yolo. It's many different stories. The next scene depends on the decision the player takes in the previous scene. So we needed to design this very close to the target audience. right? So the story is based on the day-to-day -day life of, of, of events in, in, in the target country. The language of the story also is developed to mirror the target audience. For example, we use a lot of short language. So for example, there's a lot of uh, uh, two. For example, in the game, we, we, we write two like this, right? But everyone else in our target audience writes two like this when they're typing or when they are on social media. So this kind of short lingo that is popular in social media and other forms of online platforms, we needed to, to learn and actually uh, incorporate in the game because that's what we learned from the target audience. The first brief, we, we produced this huge story, properly written language, but it was a bit not so uh, uh, palatable to our target audience. And then also the game has got music. Each scene has got a different sound to it. 
So it, it mirrors, it tries to capture the emotion of, of that uh, uh, scene. And then we also tested the game. This is very important. We, we, we conducted uh, alpha and beta taste. Alpha and beta taste are at different levels of the game, the development process of the game to identify problems and things like that. So the next uh, part is uh, program implementation. There are two parts of, of, of this uh, program implementation. Uh, the, the purpose of this step is to develop plans to ensure the successful adoption and implementation of the intervention program, in our case, serious game. Actually, I was very impressed by, by that, that, that component over there. You can see this one that you, you included. I just wish the other was like this. The sustain part. Actually, at this stage, you have, you have plan for adoption, implementation, and others say sustain, sustainability, how the game will be sustained. Do you want people to play just once and leave it, the game? Or you want people to play once and tomorrow and tomorrow? You have to have a plan for that. A deliberate plan, how you will get people interested. Actually, designers, game designers, have something called the curve of interest. It's designed to capture the, 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 the player within 30 seconds of opening the game. 30 seconds is even too much. Within a few seconds, you know, you should be, you decide if you're going to play the game or not. So maybe most gamers always try to uh, anticipate this curve of interest. For example, in many games, I'm sure you've seen this, they first allow you to play even if before you register for the game, they allow you to play, and then when you've played enough and you're probably really liking it, something pops up. Ah, please, please register for this game to continue. They've already captured you. It's a deliberate process. You just rush and register and go back to play. So adoption and implementation performance objectives are outlined. Uh, uh, you specify determinants of adoption. Before you, you, you specify determinants of the behavior, of the performance behavior. At this stage, you, you determine, uh, you specify the determinants of adoption and implementation. And then change objective, methods, practical strategies, uh, useful adoption and implementation are determined at this stage. And then you also create uh, uh, materials to promote the adoption at this stage. Mm. So for example, you, you designed uh, uh, a project to help people remember to take their medication, but what determines whether or not someone actually listens or read a pamphlet or play the game? It's adoption. So uh, I actually looked for a definition for this, uh, and I found someone some definition related to serious games or games in general. So this adoption is defined in just technology. There's a company, an online company, uh, uh, they say they define technology adoption as a process that begins with awareness <clears throat> of the technology and progresses through a series of steps uh, that end in appropriate and effective usage. I like this definition. So they, they outline five steps of, of this process. So in serious games, I think similar definition can be applied. You know, first the person has to know about the game. So awareness. But be, be between them knowing to them using the game appropriately and effectively is a long way. There's a lot of things that have, have to happen between knowing about the game and using the game. Actually, this is, now I am having this, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing uh, this stage of, of Swaziolo, thinking very carefully about uh, uh, this, this, this adoption. So there are several steps, maybe I won't go to them. Um, there's awareness. So potential users learn in enough about the technology and its benefit <coughs> uh, to decide whether they want to uh, investigate more or further about the game, for example. And then after that, 
they, they, they do some assessment. Potential users evaluate uh, usefulness uh, and usability of the technology. And after as assessment, they decide whether or not they will accept it. Um, potential users decide to acquire and use the technology or decide not to adopt. Learning. So users develop skills and knowledge required to use the technology. So if it's a game, how do you play the game? There are rules towards the game. Is it difficult? Is it easy? And then usage. Users determine, uh, demonstrate appropriate effective uh, use of the technology. So there are many steps that you, as a serious game uh, uh, researcher, you need to think about when deciding. You need to think about the steps. Okay, so for Swaziolo, uh, this is what we are planning to use. So we're going to use a lot of uh, marketing for Swaziolo, a lot in all online platforms. Uh, maybe in a couple of months, in a couple of weeks, we will fully utilize this. And then you'll direct people to our website. They'll get screened for eligibility. If eligible, they get a chance to download the game. And sign informed consent, get randomized into intervention uh, and the control group. So also in Swaziolo experience we identified the network uh, to promote adoption. We created promotional materials, so video, infographics and pictures that we're going to use. And then uh, we also published the protocol. This, this, this steps really helped us a lot because we, we got a lot of feedback for our protocol in terms of ethical issues and some methods and strategies that we use. So uh, I'd suggest if you're planning an intervention, please publish your protocol. It's very useful to get early feedback before you start working on the, on the, on the intervention itself. And then the last part that is actually built throughout the intervention is uh, evaluation plan. This actually starts much earlier uh, formulating, when formulating uh, objectives it's crucial part of any uh, any program. The intervention evaluation design uh, already included in the intervention protocol, study protocol. So it, it includes PECO, right? So your question, your research question has to be clear to anyone, right? And then also your hypotheses, you need to design them in such a way that they are measurable, they are testable, and they make sense from the game. So their hypothesis has to be linked to what happens in the game, the outcomes of the game or the intervention. Then also statistical uh, analysis uh, should be well described. And then um, measurement tools are well calibra calibrated, they're pre-tested and they're validated. And then appropriate ethical clearance. And also you, you test the randomization because we, we are doing a, a, a controlled uh, a randomized study. So you test the randomization and make sure that everything works. So we already done that and uh, the Swazi Yolo evaluation plan looks like this. So we have uh, an intervention group and we have a control group. And then we have, uh, we'll expose them to the intervention. And then we'll measure at the end. So most interventions I'm seeing measure just before and after. And then they see an increase, ah, it's effective, it works. Um, some interventions measure like this, both control and, and randomized uh, group. But I think the strongest intervention design is one that measures before and after for one group and before and after for the control group. And then measure the effect in the difference between the two groups. So this is an example. For, for example, uh, if you think about certain behavior and the prevalence of that behavior in the, the intervention group is 19%, in the control group is 19%, right? So baseline, correct, say there's no difference. And then you give the intervention, and then you see 40% in the control, and then you see 22% uh, uh, here. The, the difference is not, uh, maybe it's not 20%, maybe. The difference is actually the difference between the two. 
in the intervention group. So this is the, the intervention design of Swaziolo.